Welcome inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitby, Ontario, as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club hosts the Coburg Kodiaks, the first time hosting the Kodiaks this season. Coburg comes into this one a 1-4 in four record, and that one win was the first game of the year when Coburg bested the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club 11-5. Welcome to Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV on this National Indigenous Peoples Day in Canada. I'm Jack Moore. Brooklyn is looking to bounce back. They had a tough 9-8 loss last night against the Six Nations Chiefs in Six Nations. It was a game where they were tied 6-6 late in the second period. Six Nations got a late second period goal to go up 7-6. The teams exchanged two goals in that third period, and it was a 9-8 win for the Chiefs, who are now 7-1 on the season. As we take a look at the standings here in Major Series Lacrosse, and like, like I mentioned there, Six Nations 7-1 now after that victory last night against Brooklyn. Peterborough at 5-2 through seven games so far this year. Brooklyn, that loss last night, moved them a game below 500. They are two and three on this season. Coburg and Brampton each with one win. Coburg has played five games. Brampton has played seven games so far this year. And for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, the bounce back could come at a good time. They're coming off a big win last week, an overtime victory where Connor Kiernan got the overtime winner and they're hoping to get back into the wing column and climb back to 500. As you see the head-to-head -head matchup right there. And the big thing that might come into this one is the specialty teams, the power play goals favoring the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club and the penalties per game favoring Brooklyn as well. A lot more discipline. Coburg has had some penalty trouble throughout the course of this season. Before we get you to the action, let's take you down to the floor in our pregame ceremonies. anthem over and we are getting you set for the start of Brooklyn and Coburg in major series lacrosse action on this Wednesday night at Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy, Ontario. Let's take a look at our starting goaltenders for today's game. The Coburg Kodiaks will go with number 35 Jackson Brown. The Albany Firewolves goaltender in the National Lacrosse League has an 884 goals against average and a 798 save percentage on the season for the one and four Kodiaks. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club going to Riley Hutchcraft has an assist this year as a goaltender. He has a 12 50 goals against average and a 699 save percentage. Some big scores here for the Coburg Kodiaks in this one. And Brooklyn will look to lean on Hutchcraft to get the stops between the pipes 
as we get you set for the opening faceoff. Pad one at the Iroquois Park Sports Center, home of the Ontario Lacrosse Festival. We'll have Josh uh, Jonah Beam taking the opening faceoff for the Cobra Kodiaks. And we're underway. Mike Byrne for Brooklyn, and it is Brooklyn getting the opening possession, but they turn it over. Tanner Bach takes it away. 10 goals, 12 assists on the year, and he gets the early turnover, but forced out of the cradle of his stick, and Brooklyn gets it right back. Tristan Hanna works it up the floor, and Brooklyn looking for their first offensive possession to go well. That shot goes right out of play, wasn't deflected. The stick was off the stick of Mike Byrne for Brooklyn, so it is Coburg ball. Marshall Palace will bring it up here for the Kodiaks. Works it cross floor as Hunter Agus shoots. That gets turned away by Hutchcraft. Rebound picked up on the wall by Keenan Cook. And Cook brings it up the floor for Brooklyn. Number of scratches here today for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, but they get Connor Kiernan into the lineup. Three goals, two assists on the season. Welcome addition back for Brooklyn as that shot gets turned away by Brown. Scoops up the rebound and it's the Kodiaks getting it right back. Darren Ubro off to Tanner Buck. Had that opening steal right off the opening faceoff. And 22 points on the season for him as that shot gets blocked by Brooklyn and away goes the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Tristan Hanna up the floor after blocking the shot. Now he works it off. That shot turned away by Brown. Saunders at the side of the net. Brown comes across and makes a great save. Great chance for Brooklyn, but they can't convert in transition. Cobra getting some early stops from their goaltender. Tyler Hendricks with some speed, works it back to the near side. It bounces into the Brooklyn bench and out of play. So it is Brooklyn ball, and they'll move it up the floor with speed. Mike Byrne, Kyle Waters. Trying to slow things down and set things up. First game of the season had four goals. It's been held off the score sheet since, and this is a turnover as Curtis Conley up the floor. Conley steps in, he scores! Fourth of the year for Curtis Conley, and he makes it a one-nothing game for Coburg. Two minutes, two seconds into period number one. See the two-on-one up the floor. Bo Columbus in transition with Conley. Pass was being taken away by Brooklyn, but it was Conley able to bury it past Riley Hutchcraft. And it's Coburg taking the one nothing lead early here. So they break the ice. Brooklyn wins the face off at center floor. Trying to gain possession, but the ball rolling right in front of the penalty boxes and it's picked up by Coburg. Scott Dominey. Works it off to the wall, and Coburg now with the offensive possession. Dominey gets it in the corner. Spins away from the defender, he scores! Scott Dominey, third of the year. And just 24 seconds later, Coburg takes a 2-0 lead. Brooklyn thought they had the face-off one at center floor, but it was Coburg able to work it up the floor and then Scott Dominey able to beat Hutchcraft over the right shoulder and give the Kodiaks a 2-0 lead in the opening two and a half minutes of this one. Face off one, one again by Coburg so they get another big possession and it's Tanner Buck setting things up at the offensive end of the floor. Buck had the assist on the Dominey goal. Works it off to Matt Duncan. Now it's Buck again. He steps in. That gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Rebound pops out in front. A good job by the defense of Brooklyn to knock it away from Marshall Palace and into the corner where Jordy Jones-Smith will work it up the floor. Plays with the New York Riptide in the NLL. He was traded from Saskatchewan back in September. Jones-Smith at the offensive end of the floor. Works it off to the corner, centering pass for Kerrigan, and that goes wide as Luke Pilcher picks up on the near side in the corner. Working against Conley. Pilcher off the far side, looking for Jack Boyden, but couldn't find him. And it's Brown taking it away for Coburg. So another empty possession in the early going for Brooklyn. Aaron Woods 
Checked by the Brooklyn defender, Justin Bragg, who knocks it free and away goes Brooklyn down the floor. Trent Boyd with some speed. Boyd steps in, that gets stopped by Brown and Dominey picks up the rebound. Nick Ellerton up the floor and slowing things down as Marshall Palace waiting for help off the bench. Hunter Agus back to Palace. Gets the pick, spins off it, pass down low to the net. Stopped by Hutchcraft, foot was in the crease. It didn't matter from Nick Ellerton, so it's Brooklyn ball. Kyle Waters fresh off the bench, up the floor with Connor and Brady Kiernan. Waters spins away from the defender. He shoots, that one gets deflected wide. Brady Kiernan looking for the loose ball and keeps it in the offensive zone. Now a pass up top, down low, Pilcher shot. That gets stopped by Brown. Connor Kiernan flips it back to Brady. Now it's Kyle Waters off the boards. Out in front, Kiernan gets stopped by Brown. And it's going to be Coburg ball as Brown swallows it up and Kiernan was down in the crease. So when Brooklyn does get their chances, it's Jackson Brown standing tall in net for the Kodiaks as Hendricks driving down the floor. Drops this one back. That shot stopped by Hutchcraft. And he's able to swallow it up after Agus was tied up in front of the Brooklyn net. But it is Brooklyn ball as they're back up the floor with Ryan McCrory. Tristan Hanna back to Kyle Waters. Now works it off Kerrigan. Waiting, pass in front, goes off to the far boards, picked up by Waters. Seven to shoot for Brooklyn. Kerrigan shot, stopped by Brown. Rebound picked up by Coburg. Stretch pass down the floor, trying to make it 3 0, but Hutchcraft makes the save on Scott Dominey. Thought he had his second of the game, but Riley Hutchcraft able to answer the bell on the breakaway chance for Coburg. Connor Kiernan. Setting up in the offensive zone, Kiernan. Pass in front of the net, and that one gets knocked away. He was looking for Justin Bragg. Taken away, and Liam Patton up the floor for Coburg. Patton. Flips this one back, Nick Ellerton. Off to Marshall Palace. Now off to the boards, Aaron Woods. Gets it back from Hunter Agus, and Woods steps in. Woods to the far side for Palace. Palace back to Woods. His shot gets deflected by the shin pad of Riley Hutchcraft and goes out of play. So a shot late in the shot clock for Coburg results in a fresh possession. Agus off to Woods, steps in, and that goes off the crossbar. Good chance there as that ball bounces out of play. Hit the crossbar and went out. Didn't, or no, sorry, they will say it's Coburg ball. So the Kodiaks retain possession. Aaron Woods off to Palace. Now it's Buck stepping into the middle, working it to the corner for Woods. Wasn't ready for it. Taken away by Mike Byrne. Byrne settling things down for Brooklyn as they bring it up the floor. Ben McDonnell off to Connor Kiernan, head coach for the Queens University Gales lacrosse team. Also plays for the New York Riptide in the NLL. Welcome addition back to the lineup for Brooklyn. Came back last week. The overtime victory for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Their second win of the year. Only team to beat Six Nations so far this season. Coburg got the best of Brooklyn in the first contest, 11-5. As Agus shoots, that gets kicked out by Hutchcraft and he swallows up the rebound in the crease and flips it off to the corner. Josh Taguri up the floor, and we will get a whistle as there's some pushing and shoving right in front of the Coburg bench. Connor Kiernan in the middle of it. Hunter Agus jogging off to the Coburg bench, or penalty box. So it will be Coburg getting the penalty here for roughing. So Brooklyn able to go to the power play. Seven minutes, 33 seconds into period number one. And Brooklyn's going to their first power play of the game. Trying to climb onto the score sheet here. Coburg with the first two goals of the game. And 
And Brooklyn will work it around at the offensive end of the floor. Kerrigan on the near side up top, Kiernan. Behind the back to Waters. His shot stopped by Brown. Rebound picked up by Brooklyn. Jack Boyden up top to Kiernan. Waters shoots stopped by Brown. Rebound into the crease. And Waters had a foot in there, so it's Coburg ball. Great chance for Brooklyn, but Brown making some point blank saves for Coburg. And now the Kodiaks looking to kill off some clock, but they can get a goal. They do. Aaron Woods, short handed goal. No, it was a foot in the crease, so it won't count. Brooklyn catches a break. Stay on the power play, so instead of killing off some clock, Coburg went for the goal. They scored, but the foot was in the crease from Aaron Woods, and it's still 2 0. Shot from Pilcher, kicked out by Brown, picked up in the corner. Now a pass in front for Brady. Kiernan gets knocked away. Brady gets it in behind the Coburg net. Kiernan up top for Pilcher. Pilcher off to Kiernan. Back to Pilcher. Pilcher gets the screen. Down low for Connor Kiernan off the end boards. Picked up by Waters. Seven to shoot. Kiernan tried to play it. Back up top, taken away by Coburg, and they'll work it up the floor. 40 seconds to go in the power play here for Brooklyn. Coburg able to take this down to about 10 seconds if they don't shoot or turn it over. Tyler Hendricks holding on to it up top. Jacob Saunders watching him. Marshall Powell is fresh off the bench. His shot goes wide. Jordy Jones-Smith was watching him. And Brooklyn picks up the ball at the end of the shot clock. So 13 seconds left in the power play for Brooklyn. Connor Kiernan gets it from Brady. Now it's Jack Boyden off to Brady Kiernan. Up top, steps in, shot deflects wide. Kiernan can't grab it. And he goes over and back and flips the ball into the crowd. So it will be Coburg ball on the restart. Nine minutes, 40 seconds gone in period number one. Two nothing Coburg. The last game, a loss to the Peterborough Lakers. They had a 7-5 lead going into the third period. It was a 5-2 advantage for Peterborough in goals that gave the Lakers the victory. Coburg shot stopped by Hutchcraft, but they pick up the offensive rebound and set up again. Buck off to Woods. His shot deflects wide. Off the end boards, picked up by Hendricks. Over the top, and that shot goes wide into the crowd and out of play. So we will get Brooklyn ball on the restart here. Justin Bragg works it off to Jack Boyden. Jackson Brown has been great in the early going in net for Coburg. That pass intended for Tristan Hanna goes awry. Hanna battles for the loose ball, picks it up and steps away from two Coburg defenders. Hanna. Down low to Boyden. Works that one off. Keeley. His shot deflects through. He scores. Corson Keeley gets his second on the campaign. And the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club get on the board with 9.22 to go in the first period to make it a 2-1 game. Keeley steps down, and that shot took a deflection off the Coburg defender and fooled Jackson Brown as it was going by that right foot. You see Brown looks skyward. One of those tough deflections if you're the Kodiaks, but Brooklyn will take it to get on the board and cut that Coburg lead in half, and they win the ensuing faceoff. Jordy Jones-Smith with speed up the floor, works it off, and Brooklyn will get the next possession. Tristan Hanna, who gets the assist on the play. Up top, Brady Kiernan gets the screen from Pilcher. Kiernan holding off to Hanna. Steps in over the top off the side of the net. Four seconds to shoot. Kerrigan fires. That gets deflected wide, and they'll reset the shot clock. No, they'll say it's a shot clock violation. The ref down in the far corner was calling for a reset. The shot clock never did. It'll be Coburg ball. Tyler Hendricks, seven goals, seven assists on the season. Off to Tanner Bach. Bach works it up top. Agus fires. That gets stopped by Hutchcraft. Battle for the loose ball in front of the Brooklyn net. That shot stopped by the left shoulder of Hutchcraft. And Brooklyn able to corral the rebound with Keenan Cook. 
Kyle Waters. Big forward for Brooklyn at 6'4", 205. Off to Boyden. Boyden fires. That shot gets stopped by Brown. Cobert gets another stop from their goaltender. Boyden trying to force the turnover on Rowan Kelly. Able to get it up to Liam Patton. And he goes over and back. So Liam Patton with the unforced turnover and a chance for McCrory as he steps in and scores. Ryan McCrory ties the game at two with 7.55 to go in the first. The unforced turnover at center floor and then the two on one on the restart for Brooklyn. And Brooklyn ties this game. Justin Bragg able to catch Liam Patton sleeping. McCrory picks up his first of the season as that ball goes to the Brooklyn bench. And we have 7.55 to go in the opening period and a 2-2 game here in Whitby. Timekeeper and referee having a conversation. The penalty box on the far side of the floor. We await to get restarted here. No Jason Crosby on the bench for Brooklyn, so Gavin Prout getting the explanation from the referees. Seconds gone in this opening period. Coburg's bench getting an explanation as well. Now all three referees huddled up at that penalty box talking with the timekeepers here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. Couple teams looking to pick up a win that would boost morale. Coburg winning that early one against Brooklyn 11 to five and then playing some close games but unable to pick up some wins and then Brooklyn an overtime win against Six Nations, an overtime win last week. They've been missing a number of key players all season long playing with a number of players from the Merchants their senior B team. Both goaltenders have made their way to their respective benches to get a water break here with 7.55 to go in the first. Is we'll take another look at that goal from Brooklyn. Ryan McCrory stepping in and putting it through the legs of Jackson Brown and then it went off that trail leg and into the net. Doug Utting walking over to the referee crease to get an explanation. Team's able to use this as almost a free timeout just over midway through the first period. 2-2 game, Cobra getting the first two goals, Brooklyn responding with two of their own. Corson Keeley getting a second of the year, Ryan McCrory picking up his first on that transition play. Jordy Jones-Smith making his way over to the referee crease to get the explanation for Brooklyn. Right. 
somebody from Brooklyn is going to the penalty box. Gavin Prout getting the explanation. So the Brooklyn penalty box door is open. Two minutes on the board against Brooklyn. So it looks like Coburg's going to their first power play of the game. Jack Boyden going to the penalty box. And Coburg getting the restart at center floor. So we're back underway here. As Coburg on their first power play of the game, that shot stopped by Hutchcraft. The rebound bounces through the crease and into the corner. Coburg able to pick up the loose ball and Woods able to reset. Hendricks works that one off to Palace. Out in front, that shot goes wide into the crease and trapped down by Brooklyn and they're able to scoop it up and get the shot clock reset. So just over 30 seconds gone in the power play for Coburg. So it was a delay of game penalty for Brooklyn. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock, short-handed for Brooklyn as Zach Kerrigan holds on the near side. Works it down low. Pilcher trying to spin away from the Coburg defender being watched closely, pass in front of the net. Up over the back shot gets stopped off the stick of Connor Kiernan. Jackson Brown making the save once again for Coburg. Hendricks. Into the corner for Marshall Palace. Back up top, Tanner Buck gets it back from Agus. Now some movement as Woods back to Buck. His shot steered away by Hutchcraft and Coburg able to pick up the rebound. Woods works it off to the far side. That shot stopped by Hutchcraft. Rebound in front, picked up by Brooklyn and Zach Young looking to bring it up the floor. Jordy Jones-Smith. Has to move it quickly as they were seven seconds into that eight second clock, but he was able to get it off to Brady Kiernan. Kyle Waters midway through the shot clock. Shot clock and penalty clock. Same amount of time as Waters driving to the net, knocked off the ball by three Coburg defenders, but able to kill off essentially enough time to get us to back to five on five as Jack Boyden back on to the floor. So. Coburg 0 for 1 on the power play, as is Brooklyn. Pass up top, Hendricks. Off to the corner, that bounces perfectly into the stick of Vegas. Up top for Woods. Pass to the far side of the floor, stopped by Hutchcraft. Nice sliding save on Ben French. Now French, in behind the Brooklyn net, into the corner, back up top for Palace. Hendricks steps in, Hutchcraft the save, rebound into the corner. Ben French picks up working against Justin Bragg. French, screen in front by Marshall Palace, a little too strong, and it's Brooklyn ball on the offensive foul by the Kodiaks. Boyden, after serving that penalty for Brooklyn, works it up top for Waters. Kerrigan into the corner, Pilcher. Back to Boyden, steps away from the defender, stopped by Brown, he scores! It got through and Brooklyn takes a 3-2 lead on their third unanswered goal of the game. Jack Boyden gets his first of the season. Boyden walked in and it bounced through and with some backspin came out of the net, but Brooklyn was able to convert Boyden was able to fool Brown. And Brooklyn takes their first lead of the game with 4.53 to go in the first period. So Brooklyn able to respond after Coburg scored the opening two goals of the game with three of their own. Coburg with possession now looking to respond. Marshall Palace fresh off the bench, has Hendricks with him to his left, works it back to the four wall. 
Now Buck off to Woods. Centering pass gets knocked down. Palace couldn't find it after it was knocked to the boards by Jacob Saunders. And Brooklyn gets possession back. Good defensive play there by Saunders to knock it free. Cross floor pass to Brady Kiernan as he walks in and he scores! Brady Kiernan second of the year. And it's 4-2 Brooklyn. Some nice ball movement there by the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Brady Kiernan steps into the middle after stepping away from the defender and then able to fire it past Jackson Brown. 4-0-1 to go in the first period and now it's Brooklyn with the two goal advantage. Saunders picks it up off the faceoff, and Jordy Jones-Smith will start the transition off the faceoff win after Brooklyn scores their fourth unanswered goal of this first period after going down 2-0. Yeah. Kerrigan works it off to Waters. Dominey trying to knock it free into the corner. Waters gets it back, plays it up top. Keeley already with a goal in this one. He shoots that one wide, and that loose ball picked up by Connor Kiernan. Keeley fires at the end of the shot clock and he missed the net, so it'll be Coburg ball. So the Kodiaks will get the restart from their own end of the floor and work it up with 3.15 to go in the first period. Scored the opening two, but have given up four straight, looking to stop the bleeding. Agus off to the boards as Wood steps in. Up top, Hendricks over the top, stopped by Hutchcraft. Now, Brooklyn picking up the loose ball and working it up the floor. Trent Boyd with some speed, driving in behind the back, stopped by Brown. Jackson Brown with a big kick save with the right foot after Trent Boyd went behind the back to try and make a pretty one there. Marshall Palace getting the screen, screen from Buck. Pass in front, Hendricks stopped by the mask of Hutchcraft and the rebound picked up by Ryan McCrory. Tristan Hanna in transition for Brooklyn. Back to Boyden. Off to Brady Kiernan that bounces in front. And Pilcher able to pick it up. His shot goes well wide. Picked up on the far side and kept in by Brooklyn. Brady Kiernan in the corner. Kiernan down low. That behind the back shot from Pilcher stopped by Brown. Patton picks up the loose ball and works it ahead for Matt Duncan. Duncan flips it back to Ben French under two minutes to play in period number one. 15 to shoot for Coburg. French down low. It goes off the mask of Hutchcraft as it missed Tanner Buck, the intended target. And Brooklyn able to pick up the loose ball. Keeley off to Kerrigan. Centering pass back for Keeley. That goes wide. Coburg able to pick it up as Bo Columbus up the floor for the Kodiaks. Marshall Palace works it off for Hendricks. Hendricks getting the screen from Palace. Hendricks driving in his shot, and that goes off the post picked up by Brooklyn. And Brooklyn able to work it up the floor with Keenan Cook. Look back for Jack Boyden. And he holds on the boards. 15 to shoot for Brooklyn. 4-2 lead. Under a minute to play here in period number one. Brady Kiernan. Off to the boards. Kerrigan. Waters shoots. That gets stopped by Brown. And away goes Coburg. Liam Patton with some speed. Four on two for Coburg. Drop pass. Now near side for Agus. And it goes into the corner. Picked up by Brooklyn, and away goes Brooklyn with just over 30 seconds to play in the period, but that pass goes into the penalty box and out of play, and Coburg will call a timeout with 28 seconds to go, so shot clock will be turned off here as Coburg will get the final possession. Or no, they're going to call Hunter Agus for a roughing penalty. So Brooklyn's going to the power play. 
and they'll get the final possession of the first period. So up 4-2. And with the final possession of period number one, 28 seconds on the game clock, 30 seconds on the shot clock. So Brooklyn will just work it around and try and get one final shot. They allowed a late one in the second period yesterday after the game, head coach Jason Crosby said he should have called a timeout, he didn't. As Brooklyn working it around, Pilcher can't fire that shot as he missed it and taken away by Doug Udding. Udding with speed, three seconds to shoot. Udding fires, stopped by Hutchcraft, and that will end period number one. So it's Coburg getting the first two goals of the opening period, but Brooklyn responding with four of their own to take a 4-2 lead through 20 minutes of play here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center, and they still have 91 seconds on the power play when period number two resumes. We'll take a break and we'll talk about a trade that happened earlier today involving the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse, and it's on Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Today, I help the senior find transportation to an important medical appointment. Today, I helped a new mom find virtual programming so she didn't feel so isolated. Today, I helped someone understand new government supports. Every day, 211 navigators connect Canadians to critical government and community programs and services. 211. Help starts here. My Uncle Cheney was one of over 150,000 Indigenous children that were taken to residential schools between the 1800s and 1996. My uncle ran away from school, wanting to get home to his mom and dad. And sadly, he didn't make it and died of exposure. When Gord Downey found out about my late Uncle Cheney's story, he wrote Secret Path, a series of poems that became an album, then a graphic novel, a documentary, and a concert. Gord met my family, and together we formed the Gord Downey and Cheney Winjack Fund. Together, we are sharing Secret Path and other reconciliation resources with legacy schools, setting up legacy spaces across Canada, and hosting events like Secret Path Week to inspire all Canadians to engage in reconciliation. action. Before he left us, Gord asked us all to do something. You're going to figure it out. Will you join us? Together, we can make Canada a better place. Up next on Meet the Band with the BMD, we have recording artists Mars and RCN Rambo. Welcome back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy, Ontario. As the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club have a 4-2 lead on the Coburg Kodiaks through 20 minutes of play. It was Coburg getting the first two goals of that first period. Jack Moore with you on Rogers TV Durham. Well, Brooklyn made some news today, making a trade with the Peterborough Lakers and able to acquire Caleb Creaser from Peterborough. In addition, they also received um, future considerations and are... Peterborough received future considerations and the rights to Austin Murphy. Caleb is currently at the World Lacrosse Championships in San Diego. Team Canada kicks off the tournament. First game of the tournament is tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern when Canada takes on the United States. Of course, Dyson Williams, who was on the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club last season, uh, he is there for Canada as well. Caleb Creaser anticipated to be the number three goaltender for Team Canada. He did an interview before the tournament began and said he doesn't expect to get much playing time, but he is there if need be to be the third goalie for Canada in field lacrosse. He is a goaltender. That's where he played in university, but he will be a runner for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club when he comes back from the World Lacrosse Championship and again, Team Canada kicking off their tournament 
That is tonight at 10 p.m. against Team USA, and it's in San Diego, hence the late start. Brooklyn leading 4-2 over the Coburg Kodiaks through 20 minutes of play. We'll get to your highlights after the break. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse, and it's on Rogers TV. I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen, and I've had the opportunity to spend my life traveling and photographing exotic locales around the world. Thanks to Rogers TV, I'm now able to share my adventures with you on my show, Photos and Travel, right here on Rogers TV. I'm Eric Marchinos of Cinema Scene and Review. Join me for a monthly movie roundup of new releases either in theaters or available to stream. See you next time in review. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. These days at your local Legion, we're marching to the beat of a different drum on a mission to support veterans, to have fun, and to welcome everyone to our ranks. You don't have to be a veteran to join the Legion. And as a member, you'll join thousands of others serving our veterans, our communities, and our country. Oh yeah, and our member perks program will save you thousands on shopping, dining, products, and services across the country. Join us at legion.ca. Think it's too late to become more fit? Think again. I'm personal trainer Karen Ross, and my mission is to help you take control and find your way back to health and wellness. Tune in to A Little Bit Fit with me, Karen Ross, here on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Constable Daryl Rice, Durham Regional Police Service. Tune into Rogers Cable 10 to watch me on Seniors Talk with DRPS, where we'll talk about all kinds of amazing information and community programs for you, our seniors in Durham Region. Welcome back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy, Brooklyn leading Covert 42 through 20 minutes of play as we take a look at the first period highlights from this contest. It was Covert getting out early in this one. You see them in transition and it's Curtis Conley getting his fourth of the year, flying it by Riley Hutchcraft as we see it again. And that one goes in. That opened the scoring, one nothing for Coburg. They would get the next one before Brooklyn even got a possession. Scott Dominey over the shoulder of Hutchcraft, early going here, 24 seconds apart. It's two nothing Coburg, but here comes Brooklyn. Some good ball moving in the offensive zone, and Corson Keeley rips it home. It gets deflected right before it beats Jackson Brown, and Brooklyn gets on the board. It's a 2-1 game, still in favor of Covert. Here we go again with Brooklyn trying to tie it up at two and they will be able to. Brian McCrory puts it through the wickets of Jackson Brown on the pass from Justin Bragg and it's a 2-2 game. Covert would go to the power play. Brooklyn would kill it off and then they would get a goal from Jack Boyden who puts it home past Jackson Brown and then Brady Kiernan would make it a 4-2 game for Brooklyn through one period of play, their fourth unanswered goal of the opening frame. We'll take a break and be back on Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. The regulars, the guys who keep this place in business. Last week, they had something to celebrate. Jason had just finished university. So they toasted his profs, his TAs, his old roommates. Well, they toasted just about everyone. But I worry about and take care of my guys. So even when I know they're not driving, sometimes that means bringing them a little surprise. And then they had a drink to me. Brought to you by Smart Serve Ontario and Arrive Alive, Drive Sober. Let's go! I literally saved the world. Thank you, Spider-Man. You're an Avenger. Have I killed you before? Batman. He's a monster who thinks he's a god. Everything you call a life, I will burn out of time. 
Oh, we're all gonna die. Treaty in Cree is Naskumitoin, an oral agreement. And our agreements were always spoken. For George Spence, the core of treaty was Wichihioen, to help one another. And so we, the commissioners. He was there for the making of Treaty 9, where the Cree were told. We will honor this agreement together for as long as the sun shines and the waters flow. The Cree made their mark because they were assured that the land would be shared and they would always be able to harvest what they needed. George Spence was my great-grandfather. In his life, he saw many promises of the treaty go unfulfilled. Treaties were essential to the creation of Canada. First Nations still fight for the agreements to be honored. making their way back onto the floor for period number two here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club with a 4-2 lead over the Coburg Kodiaks through 20 minutes of play. Coburg 1-4 looking for their second win of the season, looking for their second win of the season against Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club sitting at 2-3 after a 9-8 loss on the road against Six Nations last night. A little bit of a delay getting home because of that fiery crash on the 401 but able to suit up for tonight's game on this Wednesday night in Whippy. Jack Moore with you on Rogers TV and it is Brooklyn with 91 seconds on the power play to begin the second period as the face off at center floor it's trapped down in the loose ball picked up by Brooklyn no they can't as Connor Kiernan knocked it towards Jacob Saunders, Jordy Jones-Smith able to finally find it. So Brooklyn will get the opening possession of period number two. Keeley works it off for Brady Kiernan. Off to Pilcher who had two assists in that opening period. Waters down low to Kiernan, back to Waters. Pilcher up top. Kiernan down for Keeley. Kiernan, Pilcher, Waters steps in, he scores! A minute, four seconds into the power play, 35 seconds into period number two, and the fifth unanswered goal for Brooklyn comes from Kyle Waters, working it around the perimeter, gets the screen from Keeley in front. He won't get the assist, but he opened up the lane for Waters to rip that one home. And the fifth of the year for Kyle Waters makes it 5-2 Brooklyn. Scott Dominey, stretch pass down the floor, Utting with a chance to respond, and Riley Hutchcraft making his 15th save of the game so far. Now Coburg able to find the loose ball, trying to get something going here in the early parts of the second as Buck gets stopped by Hutchcraft again. 16th save of the game. 15 saves for Jackson Brown in that opening period. 14 for Riley Hutchcraft as Kiernan walks in and shoots Brown. I'm not sure saw it as it was coming in so fast. Brooklyn picks up the offensive rebound and a fresh shot clock because Kiernan off to Brady Kiernan. Kerrigan to Kiernan and he scores! Second of the game for Brady Kiernan and it's six to Brooklyn. Some nice passing in the offensive zone. In a minute, 28 seconds into period number two. Open man in front of the net is Brady Kiernan. And he's able to put it home to give Brooklyn their second goal of the second period. And a four goal advantage. It's a big hit from Ryan McCrory right off the faceoff. And going right to the bench was Jonah Beam for the Coburg Kodiaks. Brooklyn able to force the turnover in their end and bring it up the floor as Tristan Hanna works it back to Mike Byrne. And he goes over and back at center floor. No center floor stripe here 
the Iroquois Park Sports Center, and Mike Byrne just took it one step too far back on the over and back, so it's Coburg ball. A long change in period number two. Big screen there from Coburg, and that'll force the turnover. The late shot didn't matter, and it's Brooklyn ball as they bring it up the floor with Justin Bragg, who has an assist in this one. Corson Keeley. Spinning away from the defender to the front of the net. Stopped by Brown, and it pops up into the air. Picked up by Matt Duncan. Now Coburg trying to run the floor with some speed. Bo Columbus slows things down and finds Palace fresh off the bench. Palace works that one off to Patton. Now it's Buck fresh off the bench. Back to Palace up top. Palace off to Hendricks. That shot goes high of the net. And a penalty coming up here to Brooklyn. So Coburg will be going to the power play. Riley Hutchcraft having a word with the officials. And it will be Josh Taguri taking a spot in the penalty box here. So Coburg trying to stop this Brooklyn run. Six unanswered after Coburg scored the opening two goals of the game. Marshall Palace sets up on the power play. Hendricks gets it back up top. Now to Buck. Hendricks again. He shoots and scores. Tyler Hendricks picks up his eighth of the year and stops the Brooklyn run at six. So a 6-3 lead for Brooklyn after Coburg gets the power play goal. And it's that long frame of Tyler Hendricks getting the goal again on his eighth of the season over the shoulder of Riley Hutchcraft. Three minutes, three seconds into the second period. Face-off scrummed, and they'll give possession to Coburg off the draw. So the Kodiaks looking to get something going again and maybe pick up some momentum. Palace's pass. Woods couldn't control it. Gets forced to the boards by Saunders, but able to spin away. Now Woods off to Buck. Walking into Hendricks in front. He gets dumped down by Jacob Saunders. Now it's Buck shooting over the net. Woods fires. Stopped by Hutchcraft and the loose ball. Picked up in the crease by Ryan McCrory. And away goes Brooklyn. Pilcher. Works it off to Connor Kiernan. Kiernan out in front. They score. Trent Boyd. Third of the season for Boyd. And that will be the end of Jackson Brown's night here in Whippy. Brown goes down the tunnel in the Coburg bench as we'll see it here. Trent Boyd left alone in front of the net. Not much Jackson Brown could do. And he allows seven goals in the first 23 minutes and 49 seconds. And it's 7-3 Brooklyn. So Coburg got the response they were looking for, but weren't able to put some together. There's another penalty coming up here to Brooklyn as that shot from French gets stopped by Hutchcraft. And Coburg will regroup back in their own end with a fresh shot clock and a six on five advantage. That shot stopped by Hutchcraft in the rebound, picked up by Ben McDonnell. So Josh Taguri getting the penalty there for Brooklyn and Coburg. Going back to the power play, it was Tyler Hendricks scoring on their last chance. Coburg is one for two on the man advantage so far in this one. Hendricks up top where he scored on the last man advantage for Coburg. Bach cross floor, that shot 
Gets bounced wide and out of play by Agus, and it's Brooklyn ball. Jacob Saunders looking to kill some time with Luke Pilcher. Now it's Kyle Waters getting the screen from Connor Kiernan. Waters bouncing off a check and holding in the corner with 10 to shoot. Pass cross floor into the corner, knocked away by Scott Dominey. And the second goal of the game for Coburg. And he'll bring it up the floor and Tanner Buck will reset the Coburg power play. Woods off to Agus. Back to Woods, Buck to Woods. Back to Buck. Buck up top to Hendricks. Gets the screen, steps in. That shot goes wide. Bounces off Woods. Saunders battling for it. And it rolls into the Brooklyn crease. And the shot clock violation will go against Coburg. It's Brooklyn ball. Saunders brings it up the floor with some speed. Connor Kiernan. Works it off to Boyden. Boyden steps into the corner, being watched by Udding. Boyden. Stepping up top, trying to spin away from the defender, and he does, gets away from Connolly. Flips it out in front for Connor Kiernan into the far corner. Three to shoot, and that will be a shot clock violation for Brooklyn, but kills off 30 seconds of the Coburg power play. So very effective penalty kill possession there for Brooklyn. 15 seconds on the man advantage for Coburg. Tanner Buck, he shoots, that just misses the far corner. Hendricks into the corner for Bach. Pushing and shoving in front of the net with Paulus as Bach works that one off. Woods fires. That gets blocked in front into the corner as Woods being chased down by Taguri. One for three are the Coburg Kodiaks on the man advantage in this one. And Brooklyn picks up position in their own end and works it up the floor. Kyle Waters. Gets the screen from Boyd and flips it back to Trent Boyd. Boyd works it off to the net. That one gets stopped. Ruska makes his first save of the game as a stretch pass for Dominey down the floor. He scores. Second of the game in transition for Scott Dominey. Seven minutes, one second into the second period. And Cobra gets back on the board with their fourth of the game. Scott Dominey able to beat Riley Hutchcraft, who tried to get as big as possible in net for Brooklyn. Still a three goal advantage for Brooklyn in this one. Second of the game for Scott Dominey. After Cobra gets their first save from Lane Ruska. Came in relief from, uh, uh, from Jackson Brown, who allowed seven goals in just over a period of play. Agus into the corner. Powless out in front for Bach. That one gets shouldered away by Hutchcraft. Now flipped up the floor, and away goes Justin Bragg. Bragg with some speed. Works it off to Kiernan. Kiernan. Flips it back to Boyd, and that cross-floor pass for Kerrigan picked up by Brooklyn. Still 15 to shoot. Keeley to Kiernan, that shot. And it's in the shin pad of Lane Ruska. And Coburn will bring it back up the floor. Bouncing ball right in front of the Brooklyn net. Taken away by Brooklyn, and they'll work it up the floor. Keeley. Being watched closely by Newbro. And Brady Kiernan will slow it down for Brooklyn. Connor Kiernan up top. Fires that stop by Ruska. Pilcher on the rebound. Couldn't fire at home. Now Newbro works it back up the floor and away goes Hooding. Seven four lead with 11 and a half to play in period number two for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Trying to pick up their third win of the year and climb back to 500. That shot stopped by Hutchcraft. Woods picks up his own rebound on the far boards. Ben French 
Off to the wall, here's Palace. Palace in front for French, stopped by Hutchcraft, and he's able to trap it down. Ben McDonnell, goal and an assist on the season. Kyle Waters gets the pass from Boyden. That over the top shot gets knocked down in front and Ruska makes the rebound save. Coburg will get possession back. Nick Ellerton off to Conley. Now Hendricks. Sets the screen for Palace. Palace works it into the corner for Buck. Eight to shoot for Coburg. Buck looking for a lane. Pass in front. Palace behind the back. Stopped by Hutchcraft. Rebound picked up by Agus. It was knocked out of his cradle. And Taguri able to scoop up that loose ball. Good defensive play there to not allow another Coburg possession for Brooklyn. Now it's Waters. He steps in, stopped by Ruska. Rebound in front, picked up by Brooklyn again. Keeley slowing things down as he gets the hands up from the bench to allow them to get Luke Pilcher onto the floor. Now Boyden has a bounce out of his stick, and that will be over and back against Brooklyn. Now picked up by Dominey, off to French. Bounces into the corner and off to the end boards. Dominey. Lost the ball to Saunders and it rolls into the crease and Riley Hutchcraft will scoop it up and play it off to Boyden. Domini watching Boyden closely as he has to get up the floor. Able to work this out to Brady Kiernan. Gets the screen from Kerrigan. Kiernan over the top, stopped by Ruska. Uh, loose ball picked up by Brady Kiernan again as he steps in. Spins back to Waters. His shot. That gets deflected away by Ruska. And Brooklyn able to pick up another offensive rebound in a fresh shot clock. Kyle Waters. Into the corner. Connor Kiernan. Kiernan. Back up top. Flips it off to Kerrigan on the wall. Ten to shoot for Brooklyn. Up top, Kyle Waters steps in and scores! <laughs> Kyle Waters rips home his second of the game. 8.40 to go in period number two and an 8-4 lead for Brooklyn. Waters gets the pass from Brady Kiernan in the corner, already with two goals in this one. And Kyle Waters gets his second of the game. Brooklyn wins the ensuing faceoff, and Mike Byrne with speed sets up at the offensive end of the floor. Byrne works it off for Saunders. Tristan Hanna off to Corson Keeley. Keeley tried to go to Kiernan, taken away by Dominey. Already has two in transition, looking for his third. Scott Dominey behind the back. That one missed the net. Trent Boyd picks up the rebound off the end boards. And away goes Brooklyn with some speed. They have the numbers three on two. Trent Boyd to the net. Stopped by Ruska. Coburn picks up the rebound. David Anderson works it up the floor. As Connolly couldn't pick up the bouncing ball. And Ben McDonnell regroups for Brooklyn. Mike Byrne. Flips this one off to Kyle Waters. Connor Kiernan comes off the bench, gets the cross floor pass. The screen from Waters, who gets it down low. Boyden stopped by Ruska, bouncing in the crease, and he's able to pick it up. Coburg looking to go quickly down the floor, but Brooklyn gets some defenders on quite quickly. Hendricks. Off to Marshall Palace. Palace up top for Woods. Hendricks again being watched by Jordy Jones Smith. Palace. Now it's Bach. His shot stopped by Hutchcraft. Pops up into the air. Picked up by Saunders on the near boards and spins away from Bach to stretch the floor. Now some speed in transition as Josh Taguri 
Goes off to Kyle Waters. 15 to shoot for Brooklyn. Waters stepping away from his defender to the net. He scores! Patrick goal for Kyle Waters, his seventh of the season. And with 6.39 to go in period number two, it's 9-4 Brooklyn as Waters using that break big 6-4, 205-pound frame to put that one home. Two minutes, one second after his last. Fifth goal of this middle frame here for Brooklyn. They're able to extend their lead to five over Coburg. As quick movement on the faceoff will give possession to Brooklyn again. Boyden stepping away from Patton. Has Kerrigan and works it off to him. Brady Kiernan off to Connor Kiernan on the near side. Kiernan drives in, flips it off to the far side for Brady Kiernan. Now in front for Kerrigan, he gets knocked down from behind and that's going to be a penalty against Coburg. So Brooklyn with a 9-4 lead are going to the power play as we'll get a goaltender water break here. Scott Dominey, who has two in this one for Coburg, getting called for the infraction there. And Brooklyn with another chance on the man advantage. Waters already with three in this one. Brady Kiernan with two. They'll be out there with Connor Kiernan, Corson Keeley, and Luke Pilcher. We've all done their part offensively. Pilcher with five assists in this one. Corson Keeley with a goal. Connor Kiernan with two assists. Brady Kiernan also has two assists to go with his two goals in this one. Connor Kiernan. Off to Kyle Waters, Pilcher. Now Brady Kiernan steps in looking for his hat trick, but it gets stopped by Lane Ruska. Made the first few saves after coming in relief of Jackson Brown in the early going of this second period. His box shot, that gets stopped by Hutchcraft, and he picks up the rebound shorthanded. 90 seconds to go in the power play for Brooklyn. A fresh shot clock down a man for the Coburg Kodiaks. Ben McDonnell watching Woods is Marshall Pallas on the near side. Back to Woods. His shot stopped by Hutchcraft. Rebound goes off to the far side. Bragg trying to chase it down. And it will be Coburg Ball on the infraction against Justin Bragg. So another fresh shot clock. 105 to go in the power play. They kill off 25 seconds on that shot clock. And then Able to get the foul against Brooklyn. Pallas works it out to Tanner Buck. Hendricks with a goal in this one. That shot stopped by Hutchcraft and the rebound in the crease picked up by Bragg. Justin Bragg off to Luke Pilcher. Nine second differential between shot clock and penalty clock. Brady Kiernan off to Connor Kiernan. Pilcher back to Kiernan up top. Down low for Keeley. Cross floor. And Kiernan gets turned away. Connor Kiernan, that is. So a big stand there on the penalty kill from Lane Ruska and this Coburg Kodiak's team as they drive in with speed, shouldered away by Hutchcraft as Matt Duncan was looking for his first of the season. And that loose ball picked up by Brady Kiernan, and he'll bring it up the floor. We're back to five on five, so Brooklyn can't convert on the man advantage. Still have a 9-4 lead with four minutes to go here in period number two. Boyden shot stopped by Ruska, picked up in behind the net by Kiernan. Pass up top is Jack Boyden. Works it off, and Kerrigan will slow things down. Now it's Kiernan in behind the net. 
Out in front for Waters, trying to sneak it past Ruska, but it gets blocked in front. Now Boyden picks it up again. Another shot clock reset for Brooklyn on the offensive rebound. That shot gets through. Brady Kiernan gets the hat trick, and it's 10 for Brooklyn. Offensive pressure. Brooklyn able to work it around, and Brady Kiernan with the low shot that gets through Lane Ruska. And the sixth goal of this second period comes with 3.32 to go in the middle frame and gives Brooklyn a six goal advantage. Coburg with two of their own in this second period, but Brooklyn's offense has been a little too much for the Kodiaks to handle here. Hunter Agus. Off to Tanner Buck, fresh off the bench, Ben French. Cross floor pass, picked up by Agus, being watched closely by McDonnell. Trent Boyd knocked it down, Ben French looking for the loose ball, has seven seconds to shoot, being watched closely by McDonnell. Four to shoot here for Coburg, and Buck's shot goes wide and into the meshing and out of play, so it'll be Brooklyn ball from their own end of the floor with under three minutes to go here in the second period. Kerrigan down low, pass cross floor, and Connor Kiernan gets his shot stopped by Lane Ruska with that right foot. Liam Patton. Works it up the floor, and Woods gets it to Buck. Aaron Woods with four goals and eight assists coming into this game. Works it around. Hendricks driving in off the mask of Riley Hutchcraft. Saunders couldn't pick up the loose ball, and it gets picked up by Hunter Agus. Agus works it off to Woods. Now Buck on the near side. His shot goes wide, and that bounces off the top of the glass, stays in play, and it's a transition chance for Jacob Saunders. His shot goes wide and bounces up in the air. Corson Keeley picks it up. Keeley driving to the net, works it down low. Saunders off to Boyden. His shot, he scores! Second of the game for Jack Boyden. Comes in transition after a Brooklyn bounce off the top of the glass at the Brooklyn end of the floor. And Jacob Saunders getting it started. Corson Keeley gets it to Saunders. Back to Boyden. His second of the game and second of the season. Give Brooklyn an 11-4 lead with 1.53 to go in the second period. Everything coming up Brooklyn here in period number two. As a foul will go against Brooklyn there, so Coburg will get the restart. 95 seconds to go in the middle frame. Marshall Palace. Up top, flips it back. Ben French behind the back. Couldn't get that one to go as it missed the net on the near side. And the rebound picked up by Brooklyn. Tristan Hanna slowing it down as his teammates come off the bench in transition. Brady Kiernan off to Luke Pilcher. Now it's Kyle Waters getting the screen and driving in. Spins back to Connor Kiernan. Kiernan into the corner for Brady Kiernan. Cross floor. Kyle Waters couldn't control that as it works back into the Brooklyn zone. It was tipped down by Coburg, so it wasn't over and back, but it was the end of the shot clock. So it is going to be Coburg ball on the restart. And they're going to start on the far side in the corner. With 53 seconds to go in period number two. 11 for Brooklyn. Pass in front of the net for Hendricks. Gets knocked down, and Brooklyn comes away with it. Pass up the floor, goes... Off the stick of Taguri, but able to knock it down with a lot of room in transition. Corsi Keeley over the top, shouldered away by Ruska. Scott Domini looking to start a transition play. No shot clock here. 
as we are with less time on the game clock than the shot clock in period number two. And they'll slow it down. Brandon Francis, the head coach of Covert, telling his team to hold it with 10 seconds to go in the second period. Hendricks shot stopped by Hutchcraft. Rebound rolls in front. Agus looking for it. It goes back into the Brooklyn crease as Hutchcraft knocks it down. And period number two comes to an end. Brooklyn Lacrosse Club explode for seven in that middle frame to take an 11-4 lead. Cobra gets two of their own, but the dominance at the offensive end of the floor for Brooklyn has been the difference in this one. Jackson Brown pulled just three minutes, 49 seconds into the middle frame after allowing seven goals. 11-4 the score. Brooklyn leading the Covert Kodiaks here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitby, Ontario. And we'll have your second intermission coming up after the break. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse, and it's on Rogers TV. My mother said we had to leave home. The communists were going to take my father away. If my parents were afraid, they didn't show us. But we would never forget our escape from Vietnam. We were lost. And what was your job in Vietnam? University professor. We had no home. Do you have any family in Canada? No, sir. Nobody wanted us. Welcome to Canada. Canada chose us. Canadians open their borders, their homes, and their hearts to more than 100,000 refugees fleeing persecution after the Vietnam War. We were home. Hi, I'm Daryl Mathers. And I'm Julie Van Hardingsfeld. We're the hosts of the MindVine Mental Health Show, presented by Ontario Shores Center for Mental Health Sciences. Each episode, we get the conversation going by talking with experts and people impacted by mental illness. We will all be touched by mental illness in our lifetime, and it's important to understand the resources and support available in your community. Join the conversation with MindVine. Only on Rogers TV. Welcome back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whitby as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club currently hold an 11-4 lead over the Coburg Kodiaks. Coburg with Emerson Clark on the roster and some of you watching on Rogers TV Durham will remember him from his three seasons with the Oshawa Generals in the early 2010s where he compiled 19 goals and seven assists in that time. Also had 365 penalty minutes as a member of the Oshawa Generals. Well, he's continued to get his penalty minutes in lacrosse. 46 penalty minutes in just four games. He also played in this building. He played U18 AAA with the Whippy Wildcats, but during that U18 season, he was also a call-up for the Whippy Fury of the Ontario Junior Hockey League, who are now playing in Halliburton as the Halliburton Huskies. He only played three games. He had two goals and an assist that year when he was playing his U18 AAA. He went on to finish his OHL career as an overager with the Windsor Spitfires between, uh, before making the rounds as a professional in the East Coast Hockey League and the American Hockey League and now playing for the Vegas Desert Dogs in the National Lacrosse League and playing for Coburg here. So our viewers on Rogers TV Durham have a connection to the Coburg Kodiaks roster, but he is not in the lineup here today in Durham, which he would have been playing against his uh, or would have been playing in his hometown and would have been playing on Rogers TV where he used to as a member of the Oshawa Generals again in the early 2010s. 
Brooklyn currently leading the Coburg Kodiaks 11 to 4 here in the second intermission. We'll be back with your highlights of the second period. After this, you're watching Major Series Lacrosse, and it's on Rogers TV. If you're facing Alzheimer's disease or dementia, you don't have to do it alone. There are people and resources that can help, and we'll connect you to them. Alzheimer's Society of Ontario. Our connections matter. Connection. We all need it. We live for it. It makes us feel like we're a part of something bigger. It makes us laugh, cry, and scream out for the world to hear. Connecting Canadians has been our focus for over 60 years, and it's just the beginning. All I wanted was to see a movie. One down, please. I can't sell downstairs tickets to you people. How dare they? I could afford to buy the more expensive ticket. I run my own business. <laughs> but they refuse to take my money. They left me there all night. On what charge? They said I didn't pay the theater tax. But it was really about color. Sister Desmond, appeal this conviction and your community will stand behind you. Do you have any idea what this will do to us? So what are you going to do? Make it right. Viola Desmond's case inspired Nova Scotia's civil rights movement. She was pardoned 63 years later based on the injustice of her conviction. inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center. 11 to four, the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club leading the Cobra Kodiaks in major series lacrosse action on Rogers TV. Jack Moore with you as we take a look at the second period highlights and everything was coming up. Brooklyn in period number two. You see them on the power play working it around. Kyle Waters gets the screen from Corson Keeley and rips it home. That one made it five to two in favor of Brooklyn. They went on the attack shortly thereafter. Brady Kiernan puts it home past Jackson Brown that made it six to two. Coburg would respond to make it six three. Tyler Hendricks rips it home, and then the seven three goal. Trent Boyd in front of the net. That would mark the end of the game for Jackson Brown. Seven goals allowed in 23 minutes and 49 seconds of action in net for Coburg. Lane Ruska came in. Didn't matter much. Scott Dominey would get a transition breakaway goal for Coburg, but then Kyle Waters would respond with that one, and then Waters driving in again. He would put that one home for his third of the game. He also has an assist in this one, so a four-point game for the big 6'4", 205-pound forward for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. They kept it rolling. Brady Kiernan fired that one home. He has a hat trick and two assists in this one as well. So a five point game for him. Luke Pilcher with five assists as well. Then some more good ball movement here. Jack Boyden fires that one past Lane Ruska. That was his second of the game. And Brooklyn has an 11 to four lead through 40 minutes of play. We'll be back with the third period after the break. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse and it's on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Sean Lackey, and this is Sold with Sean Lackey. You should check us out if you want to find out what's going on in the world of real estate. We'll have all sorts of guests to keep you in the loop on what's going on in this wonderful world. Hey, what's good, everybody? I'm Kareem Grant, a former professional football player. Do you want to know what current and former professional athletes are up to these days? Catch the Player's Corner with Kareem Grant exclusively on Rogers TV. 
Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit rogers.com today. Hello, I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen for Photos and Travel, where we bring the world to your doorstep. Traveling during this pandemic is virtually at a standstill. However, thanks to Rogers and YouTube, my new show, Photos and Travel, is heading into its second season. Join me for a new episode every month when we get together and explore exotic locales around the world. Check local listings for dates and times, or search Jonathan Van Bilsen's Photos and Travel on YouTube. Hutchcraft has allowed four goals through two periods, but his team has scored 11. And heading into the third period, the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club with a seven goal advantage on the scoreboard, trying to close out their third win of the season. Finally, Hutchcraft playing well between the pipes. He's faced 34 shots. He's stopped 30 of them. And the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club have an 11 to four lead as they get the opening possession of period number three. Jackson Brown will have seven goals on 23 shots in the first period and first three minutes and 49 seconds of the second period. Of course, and Keeley works it off to the corner, driving to the net, and that was a foot in the crease against Brooklyn, so it'll be Coburg ball. Connor Kiernan trying to drive in and pick up his first of the game. Lane Ruska made 14 saves on 18 shots in this one. Allowing four goals in that second period. The Brooklyn's offense exploded. Pass in front, bounces over Hutchcraft and in behind the net. Brooklyn able to maintain possession. And no Jason Crosby on the bench here today for Brooklyn. So Gavin Prout acting as the head coach and Brooklyn has to feel good about the way the first 40 minutes have gone in this one and now need a big closeout period, not allow Coburg to get any life back into it and continue this strong play that they've seen here. Last night's game against Six Nations is a shot clock violation. Goes against Brooklyn, it will be Coburg ball. Last night's game against Six Nations is Brooklyn's last road game until July. They have three consecutive home games, all Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock. You can watch them right here on Rogers TV. Riley Hutchcraft makes the save, and Brooklyn back up the four. Connor Kiernan. Fires a shot. Ruska makes the save. Zach Kerrigan, who has few assists in this one, couldn't pick up the rebound. Trent Boyd's shot gets stopped by Ruska, and he'll slow things down. Tyler Hendricks trying to get something going for his squad. Behind the back pass into the corner for Matt Duncan. Duncan pass up top, gets picked off, and away goes Keenan Cook. He'll get over center floor and slow it down for Brooklyn. Jack Boyden, two goals in this one. Works it off to the corner. Brady Kiernan up top, off to Luke Pilcher. Been a distributor in this one as he was looking for his first goal of the game to go with his five assists. But it doesn't go as Ruska makes the save and Coburg back in transition the other way. Aaron Woods off and they score. Coburg gets a response that they wanted early in the third. Two minutes, 45 seconds in to the final frame. And it's Bo Columbus getting his first of this season to make it an 11-5 game. 
And for the Kodiaks, trying to start a run here. So Ruska makes his save at one end of the floor. Aaron Woods with the dish off to Columbus. And 2.45 into this third period. Six goal advantage once again for Brooklyn. After Coburg gets on the score sheet, two goals in the first, two goals in the second for the Kodiaks. And already with one here in the third. It's a start if they want to come back as Keeley drives to the net. Ruska makes the save and the rebound picked up by Coburg. Now Conley in transition. He gets it knocked out of his cradle by Josh Taguri. Good defensive play there by Brooklyn and Jordy Jones-Smith up the floor. Kyle Waters driving in. His shot kicked out by Ruska. Rebound picked up by Brooklyn on the near side and Brady Kiernan works it to Boyden. Bounces off the wall as Newbro couldn't get a stick on it. And away goes Matt Duncan. Duncan. Jump step and works it off to Palace as he goes off for a change. Marshall Palace centering pass knocked away. Ball bouncing into the near corner. And Brooklyn able to scoop it up. Justin Bragg up the floor. Able to roll this one off to Brady Kiernan and Brooklyn to the offensive end. It's Kiernan's shot stopped by Ruska. Kerrigan was looking for the rebound, but Ruska able to trap that one down. Liam Patton starts the other way for Coburg. Marshall Palace looking for the screen. Doesn't get it, but spins away from the defender. Mike Byrne watching him closely as Tyler Hendricks up top. That shot goes out of play into the protective meshing. And it's going to be Brooklyn Ball. Four minutes, 40 seconds gone in period number three. 11-5 lead for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Mike Byrne. Off to Connor Kiernan. Got picked up by Boyden. And now it's Luke Pilcher. Pilcher drives in, spins back to the corner. Up top for Boyden, looking for the hat trick. He shoots, stopped by Ruska, and he traps down the rebound. Pass up the floor, goes to Aaron Woods. And Woods will settle things down for Coburg up top. Tanner Bach held goalless in this one, has a few assists for Coburg. Looking to get on the score sheet if Coburg wants to mount a comeback. Palace can convert on the one-time attempt. It's taken away by Brooklyn and the stretch pass over the head of Tristan Hanna. And Coburg able to take it away in their own zone. So an unforced error there on the long pass from Riley Hutchcraft. Hutchcraft with an assist on the season. As a goaltender. Maybe trying to pick up another one there. Palace shoots, stopped by Hutchcraft, rebound in front. And Buck picks it up for Coburg. Fresh shot clock for the Kodiaks. Aaron Woods works it off for Agus. Cross floor pass, looking for Buck, taken away by Jacob Saunders. He is a breakaway, Saunders in. Stopped by Ruska, and it goes off the end boards and back the other way for Coburg. Good chance there for Brooklyn to get their first of the third period. Now it's Palace stepping in. That gets stopped. Rebound stopped by Hutchcraft. Gets the stick taps off the bench from his teammates after making two big saves point blank for Brooklyn. Brooklyn back up the floor. Loose ball rolls off the far wall and picked up by Mike Byrne. Connor Kiernan, nine to shoot. Off to Brady Kiernan. He shoots through traffic, and that gets stopped by Lane Ruska. Nick Ellerton will bring it up the floor and work it off for Bach. Ellerton goes off for a change. Ben French. Off to Woods. That one gets knocked free. Bouncing ball. Taguri couldn't find it. Woods gets it back. Aaron Woods forced down to the floor. Justin Bragg trying to knock it free. Five to shoot for Coburn. Cross floor pass off the wall. Couldn't be picked up by Bach, so that's going to be a shot clock violation. 
And we'll get a goalie water timeout here with 12.34 to go in the third period, an 11-5 lead for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Only one goal here in the third, and it came from Bo Columbus of the Covert Kodiaks. Covert trying to settle things down and trying to mount a comeback. Brooklyn trying to get some offense back here. They'll get possession off the restart with 12.34 to go, so just seven minutes and 26 seconds gone in this third period. Hutchcraft with a couple big point blank saves for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club in this third period to keep this a six goal advantage. Jack Boyden will bring it up the floor. He stepped around Matt Duncan. Trying to use the shot clock to their advantage for Brooklyn, but also trying to get good offensive looks at the end of it. 12 to shoot as Kerrigan works it into the corner. Pilcher's cross floor pass for Boyden, and he couldn't get a clean shot away. So with just five to shoot for Brooklyn, and Coburg back up the floor. Hendricks checked by Boyd. Hendricks over the top, he scores! Second of the game for Tyler Hendricks. 8-0-2 into period number three. And Coburg with two unanswered to begin the third. As we'll take a look at it again, he steps away from Boyd, able to free it up to go over the top and beat Riley Hutchcraft. Five goal lead for Brooklyn here, and Tyler Hendricks feeling good after picking up his second of the game and trying to start a run for Coburg as they win the ensuing faceoff. And we'll get possession again, trying to go two for one. Box shot, that gets stopped by Hutchcraft and the rebound picked up by Brooklyn. Tristan Hanna will start the transition. Hanna. Flips this one back to Kiernan. Connor Kiernan. Driving in, kicked out by Ruska. Loose ball picked up by Kerrigan. Works it back to Boyd up top, and a fresh shot clock for Brooklyn, just as important. Connor Kiernan, down low. Kerrigan sliding save by Lane Ruska. Good chance there, and a good piece of ball movement from Brooklyn at the offensive end of the floor, but a nice sliding save from Lane Ruska. Tanner Buck. Centering pass gets it back from Woods. Now getting the screen from Pallas. Buck to Pallas. That one goes into the crease, bounces off Hutchcraft's shoulder and then his left wrist. And Brooklyn able to stretch it up the floor again. Kyle Waters. The double team knocks the ball free. Now loose at center floor, but Hanna able to scoop it up. It gets knocked out of his cradle, and away goes Coburg with some speed. In transition, Brooklyn able to get some changes and slow it down. And Kodiak's looking to get their third unanswered goal of this third period. 10-10 to go in the final frame. Palace down low for Buck in front of the net. Gets knocked off the ball, but it gets picked up in the near corner by the Kodiaks. Five to shoot for Coburg. Brooklyn with on-ball defense. Buck driving in, and he scores! Tanner Buck gets his first of the game, his 11th of the season. 9.53 to go in the third period, and it's a four-goal advantage for Brooklyn after they had a seven-goal lead coming into the final frame. Tanner Buck watching the scrum from the outside, spins away from Saunders, gets to the edge of the crease, dives across, puts it past Riley Hutchcraft. And Brooklyn sees that seven-goal advantage 
10 minutes and seven seconds ago dissipate into a four goal advantage with 9.53 to go in the third. Is there enough time for Coburg to come back? Jordy Jones-Smith having a conversation with the referees before the face-off. He'll jog back to his spot in the Brooklyn defensive zone. And Byrne looking for the face-off win. A loose ball will be poked back to Jones-Smith by Tristan Hanna. So Brooklyn able to get an offensive possession here midway through the third and Coburg on a three goal run. Can Brooklyn stop the bleeding? Connor Kiernan, cross floor to Boyden. Boyden steps in, that shot goes wide looking for the hat trick off the glass. Knocked down by Brady Kiernan, Zach Kerrigan trying to hold it free at center floor and the shot clock goes to zero. So it will be Coburg ball. 9.13 to go in the third. Three unanswered for Coburg here in the third period. Can they make it four on this possession? Marshall Palace looking for Agus. It bounces in front. Riley Hutchcraft able to knock it down and play it ahead to Zach Young. Trent Boyd. Brooklyn scoreless here in period number three. Had four in the first, exploded for seven in the second. Boyd behind the back, that one missed on the far post. Waters couldn't knock it down, away goes Coburg. Unable to scoop it up was Bo Columbus, whose Doug Utting was going into the offensive zone. Matt Duncan will slow it down. Ben French. Works this one off to Woods, now Agus. Into the middle, French's shot. That gets stopped by Hutchcraft. 8.15 to go in the third. Brooklyn ball. Jack Boyden being watched closely by Nick Ellerton. Kerrigan walks in, shoots, gets his own rebound and a fresh shot clock. That shot came with 14 seconds to go on the clock. Boyden behind the back. That gets stopped by Ruska. Rebound off to the far boards. Loose ball picked up by Coburg. Stepping away from Kyle Waters in the check was Newbro. And the Kodiaks with the offensive possession. Tanner Bach works it off to Aaron Woods. Now Agus to Marshall Palace. Palace in front for Bach and he couldn't Control that pass, and Young picks it up off the boards. Trent Boyd will bring it up the floor for Brooklyn. Flip it off to Connor Kiernan. Kiernan, cross floor pass. Pilcher steps in, and he stepped into the crease, so that one won't count. Brooklyn's bench not happy about it, and away goes Covert. Conley. Into the corner for Woods, knocked away, loose ball bouncing up into the air and gets forced out of play by Coburg, so it's Brooklyn ball. Luke Pilcher, five assists in this one. Thought he had his first of the game. Would have been his third of the season. But just got a foot in the crease. Now Boyden looking for the shot, that one deflects wide and out of play. It will be Coburg ball. Six and a half to go in the third period. Pilcher had an unbelievable year at Rochester Institute of Technology this season. 66 goals, 29 assists for 95 points. Only held scoreless in one game. That was back on March 1st against Nazareth College. Now a chance in front for Tristan Hanna. That gets stopped by Ruska. And away goes Coburg again. Six minutes to play in the third. 11-7 in favor of Brooklyn. It was 11-4 coming into the third period. Tyler Hendricks gets the screen from French. Now flips it off to Agus. Woods, cross floor. French knocks it down, getting checked into the boards. Keenan Cook watching him closely, flips it back to Hendricks, and that one's going to be over and back. 
and at a play against Coburg. It was also at the end of the shot clock, so pick your poison. It's Brooklyn ball. Kyle Waters. Flips it back to Boyden. Kerrigan flips it in for Brady Kiernan just out of his reach. And Ruska picks up the loose ball off the end boards. Stretch pass down the floor. Chance for Ellerton. Three on three here as Coburg gets some defenders off for forwards. And Brooklyn gets the vice versa. Marshall Palace off to Woods. Now it's Agus. Flips it off to Tanner Buck. Buck steps in, centering pass for Palace, being watched by two Brooklyn defenders. Shot from Woods. That gets blocked in front in a shot clock violation against Coburn. Good defensive possession there for Brooklyn. Not giving Coburg any looks. Now it's Pilcher. He's being watched by two Coburg defenders. Pilcher trying to spin away from pressure and do it himself. Off to Boyden on the far wall. Knocks it into the corner. Brady Kiernan trying to sidestep the check. The ball comes loose, and that one gets picked up by Rowan Kelly. Bo Columbus. Off to Woods. Flips this one back and kept in the offensive zone away from over and back. Tyler Hendricks with 15 to shoot for Coburg. 4-10 to go in the third. Coburg's down by four. Buck fires, stopped by Hutchcraft, and he traps it down in the crease. Jacob Saunders stretches the floor for Trent Boyd. Boyd stepping away from Utting. That pass rolls free, and that gets picked up by Nick Ellerton with some speed. Ellerton two on one against McDonnell. Ellerton to the net, stopped by Hutchcraft. Ball rolling back in the Coburg zone, and Liam Patton picks it up after Zach Young couldn't get the possession for Brooklyn. Battle for the ball on the far side, and it's Brooklyn coming away with it. Ben McDonnell. It's over center floor with 3.20 to go in the third. 11-7, the lead for Brooklyn. No goals in the third period here. Behind the back, kicked out by Ruska. Kiernan looking for the chance there. Connor Kiernan held without a goal in this one. Couldn't get that one to go, and away goes Coburg. Liam Patton forced into the boards by Trent Boyd. Patton able to flip it off to Buck. Under three to play. Buck to Agus. He shoots. That gets deflected wide. Marshall Palace at the side of the net, picked up by Byrne. Byrne steps away from Buck, and away goes Brooklyn. Mike Byrne stepping in, works it off to Kiernan, out in front, stopped by Ruska. Now a battle for the loose ball, Brady Kiernan. Down on the floor is Mike Byrne looking for it as well. Four Coburg defenders out there, and it's Tristan Hanna who picks up the loose ball, and a fresh shot clock for Brooklyn. Marshall Palace and Jordy Jones-Smith, or sorry, Trent Boyd, Standing beside each other just to the left of the Brooklyn goal. 15 to shoot for four Brooklyn forwards at the offensive end of the floor. Jack Boyden got the return feed. It bounced into the corner. Five to shoot for Brooklyn. Boyden shot. Stopped by Ruska. Ball into the air and picked up by Nick Ellerton. 153 to go in the third. A four-goal advantage for Brooklyn. Coburg's try, been trying to find some offense here in the latter half of the third period, but they've been stymied by a strong Brooklyn defense. Can they get one here? French flips it off to Agus. Now trying to go back to Palace. It bounces off the sidewall. Riley Hutchcraft able to trap it down, and Boyd works it off for Justin Bragg. Connor Kiernan holding, stepping away from Bo Columbus now forced to the wall and shovels this one off for Tristan Hanna. Hanna walks in. That one gets shouldered away by Ruska. Rolling ball gets knocked free and picked up by Coburg with just over a minute to play here in period number three. Ruska heads to the Coburg bench. Agus. Drops this one back. Hendricks couldn't control it. Now a loose ball at center floor. Knocked away by Brooklyn. Josh Taguri in. He scores!
Josh Taguri ends the Coburg run with 44 seconds to go in the third. Restores a five goal advantage for Brooklyn and all but ends this one here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. Tris Tyler Hendricks draped all over Josh Taguri and able to put it into the empty net with Lane Ruska on the Coburg bench. A strong third period here from Coburg, but too little, too late. Down 11 to four after 40 minutes of play. Three unanswered goals to start the third. Penalty coming up here to Brooklyn with just under 30 seconds to play in the third period. Is a long shot stopped by Hutchcraft, and Jordy Jones-Smith will pick up the loose ball and send Coburg to their fourth power play of the game. Trent Boyd called on the infraction with 23 seconds to play. Tyler Hendricks will get us restarted here late in the third period. A five goal advantage for Brooklyn as Palace's shot stopped. Rebound stopped as well by Riley Hutchcraft. Rebound picked up by Ben McDonnell. And he'll bat it forward and that will roll down the floor and wind out the clock here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. Brooklyn bounces back after a tough 9-8 loss last night to Six Nations. They win 12-7 on the back of a seven goal second period to move to three and three and 500 on the season. Coburn drops to one and five on the year. Their only victory that opening 11-5 game against Brooklyn earlier this season. So Brooklyn solidified in that third spot in the major series lacrosse standings behind only Peterborough and Six Nations. 12-7 the final here from the Iroquois Park Sports Center. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back next week for another Brooklyn Lacrosse Club home game with Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. I'm Jack Moore with Brampton coming in at 8 p.m. That's next Wednesday. You can watch it right here on Rogers TV. I'm Jack Moore for our great crew here at Rogers TV Durham. Producer John Green will be back next week. Brooklyn wins 12-7 and moves to 3-3 three three on the season. Good night from Whitby.